The opportunity for 5G is definitely to continue the sort of work that is happening in 4G evolution, but it's to do it with a new, fresh design. So a so-called unified error interface that's bringing together a lot of these different components of improvement. In the future, we're not just going to connect the smartphone, we're going to connect virtually everything. And that means that we have to do things in new ways we haven't done before. 4G LTE has primarily focused on mobile broadband. And if we think of the three major fields of, of use cases, then you have mobile broadband, you have wide area internet of things or internet of everything, as well as then you have applications that require high reliability. Sometimes they are called mission critical applications. So the unification represents how we can have a single network that's able to address a wide variety of use cases and really allow that to be leveraged across a larger number of services, a larger number of topologies. It's more efficient to have the ability to deploy a network that can serve multiple needs than to deploy a large number of disparate networks. The unified air interface has three main components, and it's the OFDM-based uh, optimized waveforms and multiple accesses. It also has a common flexible framework, as well as advanced technologies. From a 5G unified platform, I think one of the key things is addressing a wider variety of spectrum bands. At the same time, we're also bringing in new higher frequency bands. So not only bands below one gigahertz, bands from one to six gigahertz, but even these higher frequency bands above six gigahertz. So one of the advantages of OFDM is how we're able to multiplex different services. So if we look at different topologies and different scenarios, a different set of OFDM parameters make most sense in these different scenarios. We want to design a scalable numerology that from a principle or framework perspective be very broad, so you don't have a point solution for each of these different use cases or bands, but at the same time, you can easily tailor it or tune the subcarrier spacing, for example, or the number of tones based upon the band, the bandwidth, and the application that we're dealing with. In addressing a scalable waveform on uh, the same network, we can introduce filtering or windowing to OFDM symbols so that we can actually have different numerologies coexisting on the same network. When we look at, at modulation, we look at multiple access, it's important to think of the downlink and the uplink separately. So on the uplink, for certain large number of user scenarios, such as IoT, we do think that techniques such as resource spread multiple access will also be useful. So the common flexible framework has uh, scalability both in frequency domain to support uh, narrowband to wideband. It has flexibility in the time domain to support different time intervals, to support different latency requirements. It also has the flexibility to support future services. We want to build in future compatibility into our design. And what that means concretely is being able to leave in a time frequency grid pieces that are quote unquote blank so that we can slot in new and improved waveforms, multiple access techniques, multiple antenna techniques, so on and so forth, to meet those requirements that we cannot dream up at this point. So some of the advanced technologies are optimization for TDD. It's becoming very important for 5D. It's going to be optimization for topologies that are discussed, that is D2D, uh, for instance, and vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communications. It could also be optimizations for massive MIMO. It's becoming more important because we've got the higher uh, frequency bands in 5D. So it really enables higher bands to be utilized not only in very short distance communication, but even, say, at 4 gigahertz, achieving link budgets that we consider for macro or pico base stations at, say, 2 gigahertz. So these so-called higher frequency millimeter wave bands are another way of providing much higher data rates and new services in a localized physical area. Going above at millimeter wave, there are going to be much larger antenna arrays that are possible different uh, RF architectures that are much smaller in form factor. We can also think about unifying the uh, MAC protocols between these two spectrum to be more efficient and then also to provide a seamless uh, user experience. And so in parallel, we're pushing both 4G as hard as we can, trying to address as many use cases from 5G in the 4G design itself, and at the same time designing a 5G unified air interface to address those components in a unified way as part of a new integrated design. It's fun thinking about what might be using this in the future, that there might be some drone flying around that's using this new unified air interface and it's reliably providing some new service we haven't even thought of.